Hello, today I'm gonna to show you how you can use your iPad with a small connection over to a larger connection, a special adapter, and some great software to be able to recreate drawing on screen like this in real time and when you go to edit, this has already been combined. There's two creators that have inspired me in what I'm showing you today. The first is Adrian Salisbury. He's taught me everything I know about YouTube and Ecamm Live. I definitely recommend you check out the links of his that I put in the video description. Adrian has a video called How to Draw and Write on Live Video, and he uses the green screen with GoodNotes app on his iPad and Ecamm Live to show you how you can draw live on video, which is great for live streams or when you wanna record a video and save time editing. I also love Samuel Suresh's video, his tutorial, how I write on top of my videos using an iPad. Samuel's video is great, but requires you to do a little bit more editing with the video in a separate recording that he makes, but allows you to have that kind of frosted mirror, dark glass look. The difference is what I'm showing you today will save you time and is a hybrid of these. If you wanna do a lot of stuff live and you like the green screen effect, then check out Adrian's video. If you want to be able to use more than one color, today's video will show you how to use white on screen live. If you want to record more elaborate videos that you can speed up to show faster animation while you describe it, then you should check out Samuel's video to see how to do that one. Today's video that I'm showing you here will be how to create a look that looks similar to Samuel's video, but that functions more like Adrian's so you can use it on a live stream or to save you time in editing if you're recording a video. Now, on my iPad here, we are going to look at this app, the GoodNotes app. If you don't have that or not familiar with it, I've got a link in the video description. We'll tap on that and open it up. Here's the drawing you just saw me do when we did the opening of the video. The way this app works is you can create a notebook. And so if we were to come over here and tap new, then we can choose notebook from this list. Then we have some options for different sizes here. We're gonna title our notebook. We're just gonna call this one YouTube Demo. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn the cover off on this one. We don't necessarily need a cover. For size, you can do a lot of different things here. There's different papers that come with it. Here's what I recommend. If you are going to use this on a screen, instead of just printing them out, then set it up for, I'm gonna do HD, 1920 by 1080, and tap apply. Now I have this custom size for my paper. Then we need to change the color. You see I worked on it here. It usually will start you with white or off-white, but you can go in, tap on that, and if you go down, you can choose customize colors. We're gonna call this one black paper, Ecamm. Go to the background color, you can click the little plus button here, and that 000, 000 hex number is your pure black, so we will tap on this plus button to add it. It's now been added, we'll tap it here. That makes it our background color. We don't want any kind of a grid or dot or anything, so for foreground color, go pick the exact same thing and then tap apply. Then you can tap on this screen, you have the dimensions, you have the color, so the very top here we'll click create. And now it gives us this page that is set up to be 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 with black background, which is really important what we're gonna do. Now on the top of GoodNotes, what we're gonna use here is this pen tool in the top left, the fountain pen. And we are going to, if you wanted to screenshot or copy these, the tip sharpness, we're gonna leave it 50. Pressure sensitivity, we're gonna pump it up to 75. The tip flatness, how flat or round the tip is, we're gonna set it 33. And the stroke stabilization, how much it smooths out what you draw, we're gonna set here at 41 for today. And that'll be how we'll leave that. The next thing we have to decide is the color. And so on the far right side here, there's a color palette. And if you don't already have it, you can tap on one of these circles and choose your color. And we're gonna use white today. We're keeping it very simple, white on a black background. Then you have three thicknesses you can pick from when you're drawing. The thickest one, we've set it to solid line, two millimeters thick. For the middle thickness, stroke setting, we've also set it to a solid line, and this one just one millimeter. And then for the smallest or thinnest one, the stroke is set to 0.5 millimeters, also a solid line. That's all you need to have everything ready to go. The last tip I will tell you is over here on the right side of the screen, this little icon on here. If you tap on this, you have three options at the bottom here. Mirror entire screen is how you're able to see my full iPad screen right now. And that's what it says in the description. Audience sees what the presenter sees, which is the whole iPad screen. 
I can't tap on it right now or it'll mess it up, but I used it for the demo. When you tap on mirror presenter page, the audience no longer sees all the stuff at the top of the screen. So all this gets knocked out, your framing for the app gets knocked out the bottom, all they see is whatever your page is. And when you have that set up, you can zoom in and out and it will zoom on screen. If you wanna lock your screen in place so that you can zoom to make changes but the audience won't see it, then you just mirror full page and it will mirror your page and the changes won't happen there. Let me show you a demo real quick. Mirror presenter page. So this is what you would see on your screen when we select that mirror presenter page. And so as I'm drawing here, we'll give you this one in different colors. If I were to zoom in, the audience can track with you, which is great if you wanna draw things and be able to post stuff on here and then zoom out and have that not be as visible anymore, you can pan and zoom that way. If we go back to our demo, and we go down here and we choose mirror full page, now I can zoom on that screen. I'll use yellow here. You can see me drawing. I'm zoomed in to be able to draw really fine detail, but the audience doesn't see the page zooming in or out. It keeps that page locked in for them. For today's purposes, my recommendation would be on that drop down, you leave it set or you set it to mirror presenter page. We want them to be able to see when we zoom in and out and move around the screen. We want that to be fully animated and movable on the screen for us. All right, so we have our page set up. This is first part of it. We've got our white marker selected and we can draw on top the screen. That's kind of a thin line. And so what I suggest is you play around with this. A two finger tap will erase it. So draw a little crosshair and zoom in until that's kind of a thickness you want on your screen. Which again, if we were to show that and change our output to just mirror presenter page, you can see how thick that is. The middle thickness would be here, and that fine line would be here. That looks pretty good. We could probably even zoom out a little bit. That's about where we want it when we draw. So we'll leave our page that way. And then back on that demo screen, you do have a shortcut in the top right here. Tap on those three dots, and then click clear page and it will erase everything from the page. And now GoodNotes is ready to go for you to draw. That's the first step. Along with your iPad and your Mac, you're gonna need a little bit of accessories or some hardware to make all this stuff work as smooth as possible, along with some apps. So I've shown you the iPad and the GoodNotes app. You also need some adapters to get this signal from the iPad into your computer correctly. I've tried other ways, I've tried wireless ways, what I'm about to show you is what I consider the most dependable and what I use when I do this. So first of all, you can get Apple's adapter here. It has USB-C, HDMI, and USB, and that plugs into the USB port on your iPad. It is a bit pricey. I actually use the Stego Mini from a company called 12 South. I put a link in the description below. This adapter is a much, much more affordable version, and it includes, again, USB-C, HDMI, and USB. It also includes a headphone jack, so it's a great little tool to have for your iPad, and the cable that comes with it will allow you to plug it in real easily, even if you have a case on your iPad. Let me describe this for you and demonstrate using the technique I'm gonna teach you how to do today. We first off, we have our iPad. And then coming out of the iPad, we have a USB-C cable that runs into this very small Stego Mini adapter. Now to help me out, and I recommend this too, when you do this, I actually have a power cord, which is USB-C. I love to have power connected through that Stego Mini to my iPad. It keeps my iPad charged while I'm working on it. The last thing you wanna do is have a great setup for a live or to record your video, and then have your iPad die and be out of power in the middle of what you're doing. We have that set up, and then also coming from that Stego Mini, we have an HDMI cable HDMI is not going to run into your computer directly and so what we do with that HDMI is it runs into a small adapter and I put a link for this in the video called a cam link 4k it's a small adapter 
looks like this. HDMI goes in one side, USB comes out the other. You can try getting cheaper alternatives from Amazon or eBay or wherever. I have tried several different options. The only ones I have found to be consistent are these Camlink 4Ks. I would love for Elgato to make one that goes to USB-C and save us a step, but right now this is what we have and this is what will work for us. So get that adapter. That takes your HDMI signal and puts it into USB so that you can connect it then to a Stay Go adapter. This is the same thing we used before, but this is the full size version. A lot of ports. Um, it has Ethernet, it has USB, three of them, USB-C, it has HDMI, it has uh, an SD card slot, super helpful little device I keep in my bag. It has a longer cord for using if you're keeping it stationary. It also has a nice small travel cord that slides right inside the unit itself, which makes it great for being portable. You can pick these up. Newer ones, I think right now are white colored, the older ones are black, either one, it works great. Coming off of that cam link, then we have a USB cable that connects over to our full stay go that I showed you. And the Stay Go has a USB-C cable coming off of it. And that connects over to my MacBook Pro. This is the setup you need. I know it may look crazy, but it works really well. And it's what I'm actually using while I demo all this to you right here. So now that's the way the hardware all sets up. There's a link for all those in my description. There's a link for the Ecamm software. It's an affiliate link for me. Nothing extra cost to you. You get a 14 day free trial. You can check it out. It's a benefit to me if you actually end up subscribing through them. I love it. I've been using it for years. Now I'm gonna show you how to put it all together with Ecamm Live. This is not a deep dive into Ecamm. Like I said, if you wanna check that out, I highly recommend. If you wanna just go the free route, Adrian Salisbury has a ton of great videos on YouTube just for Ecamm Live. I've got a link to a playlist of those in my video description. He also has a great course that if you really wanna get into using this software, I highly recommend his YouTube Live Academy. It's phenomenal. Not only is his training great and the course online is great, but the community you get to be a part of is really supportive. You get to go in and try things out together. This wasn't meant to be an infomercial, but I really, really believe in it. I was a guy who tried to figure it out on my own, and after failing at it, took the course and realized it was very beneficial. So, serious promotion, you should check it out. Links in the description. Let's get in helping you set this up. So this is a live demo mode in Ecamm Live. You can see my screen and everything that's open here. On the left side, I have different scenes that I'm using in this profile. At the bottom, I have sound levels I can check out. Bottom right, different camera effects. And top right, I have overlays. And then right here is our main screen. All that will make more sense when you know how to use Ecamm. I'm gonna assume either you're gonna go ahead and learn how to use that, or that what you need is how to get what we're doing functioning for you. My camera is set up. I'm actually using an Elgato prompter so I can look right at the screen while I'm recording this. Let's get you set up for what you're doing here. So we'll go in and we're gonna create a new scene. So go up here and we'll choose scene, new empty scene. Then for source, we're gonna switch it from camera to blank. That's very important, that helps all this work. So now we have this whole scene set up and it's blank and we're gonna add some layers to it. So we're gonna add an overlay. And over here on the right hand side, we have our overlays window here. We wanna add an overlay and we wanna specifically add the camera first. So we'll go over here for a new camera overlay. We'll click on this one. Then we'll go up here to the little gear icon. We're gonna choose your camera. For me, I know that's Camlink 4K. And boom, now I'm popped up on the screen. Here's where we can start to have a little bit of fun. There are effects you can use on here. If you come over down here, there is this blur effect. We'll come out a little bit more so you can see me and that. We'll check it and we'll slide this over until I'm blurring enough. It hurts your eyes, maybe a little bit more. We'll set this one for 60. So you can see me here on the screen, but it's clearly blurred. To get that effect where it looks kind of like it is a dark screen, we're gonna go up here to the gear and to opacity, we're gonna bring this down all the way to 20%. So now we have the blur part, so we can draw on top of this, but we still need to add good notes. Good notes is connected. When it comes through, it'll actually connect as a camera. So again, we'll go over here, and add a camera overlay. Instead of FaceTime, 
We know this one is also CamLink, and so it's called CamLink 4K2. And boom, now you have good notes full screen on your device in Ecamm. So then over here on the top layer, which is good notes, we're gonna click on the gear, and we're gonna go down here to where it says blend mode. Instead of normal, we're gonna choose lighten. We'll come back out and have a look at this. And now what you have here is what looks like this dark screen and the layer on top of it. And so then when I draw, that appears on screen live as I'm talking, but it is brightly in focus. Now, if you wanna really make it stand out a little bit more, we can do a few more tweaks. We can go down here with this layer selected. We can go down, we can bring the brightness all the way up on that layer. You can make it black and white, just breaks it out totally. And now you're all set up. If we're in good notes, we come up here to the top of our page, we can add a page. We're gonna choose our current template after the current page. Now we're ready to start drawing again. And now you can go in here and begin to talk about whatever it is you need to share on screen, live. And it draws right on top of your screen. Because you have that layer separation there, this is nice and crisp. You can always switch back to your full camera screen to talk to your audience and then go back into your demo mode, switching the scenes that you set up in Ecamm. You can always add another page and be able to draw whatever it is you want on there. That's how you can do the effect that looks like Samuel Suresh with the quick time-saving technique that Adrian Salisbury did in one setup with Ecamm Live on your Mac and Good Notes on your iPad using a few accessories I've used today, the CamLink 4K and the StayGo, both mini and regular size, along with HDMI and USB and USB-C cables. Check it back out. The list is all in the video description. This should save you time if you're recording a video or make it a fun way for you to draw on screen during a live session. Unfortunately, right now, Ecamm's missing the technique that Samuel uses in his video that would allow you to have that transparency, but also be able to keep full color nice and clear. So this is the best way you can do it right now. Let me know your thoughts. Try this out. What didn't I explain clearly? What do you need answered to help you do it better? If it's about Ecamm or it's about good notes, there's lots of videos on YouTube to help those out, but I'm totally happy to help share those in the comments if that's the question you have. Give it a try right on your screen, save some time recording a video or use that to help you during a live session. Thanks so much. If this is really helpful, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what else would you like to see and I'll see you next time. Thank you.